the nation's favourite celebrities. Oh, I like surprises. Paired up with an expert. I got excited then. <gasps> Whoopsie. <laughs> and a classic car. Here we go. Wow. Their mission to scar Britain for antiques. For my own safari. The aim to make the biggest profit at auction. <gasps> but it's no easy ride. Oh dear. Who will find a hidden gem? Yeah. Mm. Who will take the biggest risk? Will anybody follow expert advice? I hate it. There will be worthy winners <laughs> and valiant losers. Double draft. Oh, no. Put your pedal to the metal. Spend, spend, spend. This is the Celebrity Antiques Road Trip. Oh, yes. How's the sound system? CD player? Yeah, yeah, there's a there's great, great bass in it, listen. <laughs> Easy on the bass. <laughs> Today on the road trip, it's a battle of the boy bands. As driving through the beautiful hills and dales of Derbyshire in a 1972 VW Transporter, her old friends Keith Duffy <laughs> and Brian McFadden. Yeah. I feel like I'm in an episode of Scooby-Doo and any minute you're going to pull off your face and Ronan Keaton's going to be sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha! <laughs> Touché, Brian. These old pals are now touring the world as boy band supergroup Boys Life, performing the hits of Keith's Boy Zone and from Brian's time in Westlife. Between them, these two heartthrobs have had a staggering 17 number one hits. But today, it's all about antiques. You've got your antique guy and I've got my antique guy and we go off separately. We both have a budget of like, I think it's something like 400 quid. And then we go and sell the items and whoever makes more money than the other wins the, the whole thing. Very succinctly explained, Keith, thank you. And helping them out today in the 1971 Buick Skylark made before three-point seat belts are Road Trip's very own Thelma and Louise. The evergreen Margie Cooper. <laughs> Look, if you feel I'm going to go over too far, just scream. I will. And the slightly that? petrified Rue Irvin. Now, I tell you what, we haven't bumped in. Lane, Lane, Lane! We haven't hit anybody yet. That was close, though. Oh, was it? Yeah. Very close. Perhaps Margie's getting overexcited at the thought of today's guests. She loves her tattoo. I've got Brian McFadden, who and was from Westlife. And I've got Keith Duffy from Boyzone. So this is a battle of the band, the celebrity antiques road trip. Boyzone versus Westlife showdown. Game on. That'll be good fun. Okay. Yeah, well, you and I, we can let the boys carry on with their shopping. You and I can sit down with a couple of donuts. <laughs> 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 Now, talking about sitting down with a couple of donuts, the camper van has made a short stop. There you go. Here's your tea bag. You're supposed to make the tea in, in that before we sit down. This is going to be a long day, isn't it? If we can't even make tea, how are we going to do this? This could indeed be a long day. Do you know, <laughs> you've been doing road trip for a lot longer than me and we're competitive, I can imagine, but I think Keith and Brian are going to be fiercely competitive. Are you ready? I suppose I'm as ready as I'm going to be. Cheers, brother. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, I see your game plan. <laughs> Get a move on, you happy campers, and don't leave the girls waiting. Are you ready for this, Rue? Yes. Uh, although I don't know <laughs> if we're ready for the boys. <laughs> aye, aye, sailors! <laughs> cool. Look at them. Hello, ladies! <laughs> Well, oh, hang on. Well, They're not the two we ordered. Yes. <laughs> how are you, darling? I'm good. How are you? Oh. All the better for seeing you. How are you? All right? I'm very well. Right. You right. look amazing. Matt. We're not going to lose you at the market right. today. Right. <laughs> so the teams have decided, but what about the motors? So what are we in? You're in that and we're in this. You're in the oh, Scooby-Doo mobile. No. Come on, darling. No, you worry. Oh, thank you. This is good stuff. We'll have the time of our life, young lady. <laughs> yeah, typical rock star, that. Time to get shopping. Right, so I've got the Duffy and Margie's with Brian. So McFadden. you've got the duster. I've got the duster. Yeah, they call me Dusty and Marge has the B Mac. The B Mac? Yeah, so it's okay. Duster and B Mac. Hmm. How's the B Mac getting on with M Coop? So are you into antiques? 
The only antique I know is Louis Walsh. <laughs> so you two are best buddies. We are indeed. But are you competitive? He is unbelievably competitive. Like we play golf together. And if Brian's not playing well, he'll be in bad form for the rest of the day. He'll throw and the golf club. Absolutely, he'll throw them into the trees. He'll he'll use disgraceful language. There'll be none of that on the road trip, thank you. I can tell you one thing is Keith Duffy is stingy. He will barter everything. If something's a hundred, he'll get it for 50p. Well <laughs> he's a barter. He's a what? We're basically going to find these antiques and unlock the secrets. Think of ourselves as detectives. Detectives? Next, yeah, we're detectives. Excellent, I like that. Detective Duffy and Irvin. Duster. Duster and Roo. Duster and Roo. Duster Roo. Duster Roo. <laughs> well, Team Duster Roo and Team B Maku, <laughs> your road trip starts today in Belpa in Derbyshire and then dilly dallies through its many dales before finishing at auction in the South Yorkshire steel town of Sheffield. Each team starts with £400 to spend. The attractive town of Belpa sits at the heart of the Derwent Valley Mills World Heritage Site, an area rich with industrial history and a prime antique hunting ground. First shop for both our teams today is Derwent Side Home Centre and Antiques. And first out of the traps are our detective duo. What a fine sunny day. What size is this place? Go give us the arm. You, I ain't gonna man. Oh. <laughs> this former 19th century flour mill stretches over three floors. But what can Rue and Keith find to spend their dough on? Have you ever been in an antique shop? No, so show me what we're looking for. <laughs> show me. You're looking for antiques, Keith, and you better hurry up, as here's the competition rolling in. Right. Wow. Are you ready? There'll be a lot. To, there'll be a lot to see. Now, nothing too heavy, because you know I'm going to have to carry it. <laughs> he is a cheeky boy. Now, what can they find in here? <laughs> Sorry. Did that hurt Sorry. your brain there? <laughs> Sorry, I don't know, I haven't got one. They're looking at hats. They're looking at hats. They're looking at hats. Ah, bit of industrial espionage, eh? Not See, me. maybe if you found this as its original form, before somebody kind of messed it up. Behind them, look right through. There's like an old camera. He's pointing at it now, he's pointing at it now. It's like an old movie camera. Is, it? Is that what he's after? He just walked away from it. It might look like a movie camera. Dick's eye, what are you doing yeah. here? Dick's yeah. Found binoculars. Yeah, what did you so see? what are you up to? You. <laughs> <laughs> now, have you bought anything? No. I saw you looking at that old uh, camera thing behind there. Were you impressed by it? No. Does it look, how much is it? It's a lamp. It's not a lamp. Uh, They're all lamps, yeah, Brian. Yeah, they're lamps. <laughs> Margie, I think we'll be picking the items today. What do you think? I think that might be a great idea. Now, can Rue shed any light on what this is? Well. This is a huge copper ewer, and I'm guessing it's... Feel the weight of that. A ewer is an old Anglo-Norman name for a jug or vase used to carry water. This one comes from Asia. The ticket price is £70. There's something you could even carry on your head, but that's very, very, very heavy. It's heavy without any water in it. I know, exactly. Can you imagine you'd... if there was water in it? You'd have a pretty flat head by the end of yeah, the day. Well, you'd have a sore head anyway. But do you know what attracts me to this? It's solid copper. This, being copper, is immediately collectible for the scrap value. And the sheer weight of it and the size of it... So are you saying to me that we're effectively going to buy this because somebody else will buy it from us in order to melt it down or break it up to make no, it into something else? No, not at all. But it's the same with silver. Silver has a minimum... and gold. It's got a minimum scrap value. It doesn't mean someone's going to melt it down. It means it will hold its value no oh, matter what. Oh, I see. What. OK. Yeah. One to think about. So... One maybe for Keith and Rue. Now, have Brian and Margie found anything? Ooh! A drum. Yes! Now, I think drums are quite good. Why? Well, because they make coffee tables out of them. A coffee table? Yeah! Put a glass top on it. Yeah, but you don't want to put it down too quick, as they'll go... <laughs> Boing! It's not terribly old. It's quite nice when they've got, like, rope round it them. It looks a bit wrecked, though, doesn't it? Oh, hang on, it's got some writing on it. What oh, hey, what's he say? Oh, it's Prince of Wales feathers. Oh, that's interesting. It's the third cadet. What's the Prince, the Prince of Wales? The Prince of Wales just says Ich Dean. That's German. Yeah. You're right. It is German, Brian. Clever boy. It means I serve. 
The ticket price on this 1950s drum is £99. Let's think of the people who would like this. You're going to have, obviously, maybe as you said, some young, cool kid who might yeah. want it in their yeah. in the living room as a coffee yeah. table. Yeah. You might want a royalist who likes the idea that it's got anything to do <laughs> yeah, with the royal true. family. You think you're right. You're thinking right. Or someone who just likes drums. Or a young, cool, drum-playing, coffee-drinking royalist. <laughs> Look, I really like this. Yeah. But 99's not in. We can't do it at that. It's too much, isn't it? Yeah. Do you reckon we could get them down? Well, you're going to smile at me, so you've got to smile at her. I can't. I'm, I'm used it. If I try and barter, we'll pay 120 for it. Will you barter for me? Right, I'll barter. Right. On hand to help is Sharon. Hello, Hello there. Hello. Right, so, we thought that we'd quite fancy buying this. OK. So what is the best price? Um, Let's start at a fiver, <laughs> OK? And work up quite we'll rapidly. <laughs> What I will How need much? to do, let me just give the dealer a right. call. OK, while Sharon gets on the blower to the drum dealer, are Keith and Rue any closer to buying anything? I mean, in the world that we live in today, though, is, is well, this a good thing or a bad thing, you know? If that's authentic, it's quite amazing. But in this day and age, is it, is it PC to, to, to be buying something like that? Because obviously there was people trying to make money on other people's misfortune. It's a shame. This symbolises a time we didn't understand our bodies, we didn't understand mes medicine and science, but it's also a reminder to how far we've moved on. These signs are often reproductions but make good decorative pieces. The ticket price is £30. But would people in auction be seen to be buying something like this? But I think People will go for something that visually looks good in their yeah. man cave, their home bar, that's not associated with what it was many hundreds of years ago. And it's just a colourful sign that's quite quirky. Shall we, shall we have a think about it? Absolutely. Let's bank it. Put it in the bank. <laughs> OK, so that's two possible suspects now for detectives Duffy and Irvin. How did Sharon get on with that drum dealer? I've spoke to our lovely dealer, Nick, now. He gave me clearance to drop it to 68. Oh. Well, I mean, Would that be all right for you? Great. I'm very happy with that. Okay. Are you happy Wouldn't with that? Oh, absolutely. Thank you very oh, much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Fantastic. The first deal of the day is done. The 1950s drum for £68, leaving them with £332. Right. I guess so, I'm carrying this, yeah? Yeah. Right, you go and have sure a tea. Are. Go on. With just one purchase, Brian and Margie are back to the Buick. They're hitting the road. But are Keith and Rue still browsing? Now, see, Keith, that's quite interesting. It doesn't look sexy or colourful, but you know what? These are very, very collectible at auction. It's a large barrel, £38, last one left. And do you know what these are really popular for? Huge, big planters in gardens. If you were to buy that new from a garden centre, you'd be looking at about £150. I think that's a no-brainer, if you like it. Yeah, no, no, I'm with you. We've got a few other shops to go to, so we don't only blow our budget on in the one place. No, definitely not. Seen this, which we like at 38. The circus sign, yeah. 30. And the big copper ewer, 70. So in total, that's £138. So do you think those three things are different enough, quirky enough? Yeah. This road trip only happens once. So I want to make sure we win. Oh, right. So I need to make sure that these ladies here give us a good price. Keith likes a haggle, so let's hope oh, Sharon wow. preferred Boyzone to Westlife. So yeah. there's a few different items that we'd like to purchase okay. if we can agree on the price. OK. But we don't want to hurt you where you're already hurting. OK. So we don't mind paying £38 for the barrel. Yes. There's a sign through in the other room, the yeah. freak show sign. We're happy to give you 30 quid for yeah. the sign. OK. You've got a copper urn. Yes. Well, at the moment, you're selling for 70. OK. But we would really appreciate it if you guys could do a considerable deal on that. OK. The whole lot would be 138. Mm hmm Take it down to 50 for the year would be 118. I think we can give you an extra 10 pounds off that. So 108 we'd, in total. We'd be really happy with and that. And you know yeah. what? I'm not going to argue with you. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Ah, a bit of the old blarney there from Keith. And he's sealed the deal. That's the ewer knocked down to £40, the sign for 30 and the barrel for 38 It's absolutely brilliant. It Thanks just takes so much pressure off. We can take our time now in the other shops and... Oh, and big weight off my shoulders. Come well on, Mr. Well done. Well done. Ah, oh, you're too strong. 
Brian and Margie, meanwhile, are having a good old natter in the Buick. Going forward in life, this will be probably my family heirloom, and I'll give this to my kids when I finally pass on. Hopefully, they'll do the same. Gary Player, one of the greatest golfers of all time, is a friend of mine. And as a thank you for all the work I've done for his charity, he gave me this Rolex engraved I'm the with love from Gary Player. Oh, my um, good. So, what to me, this is priceless, you know? Is he waterproof? I don't know, I haven't tried yet. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a great swimmer, so I don't know. But you would think living in Ireland, I'd know by now. Well, the next stop for you two might be of interest then, Brian. It's the Derbyshire village of Ashbourne. 300 years ago, it was one of the world centres of clockmaking, and this unlikely place put the revolution in the Industrial Revolution. Family firm Haycox has been going since the 18th century, and Neil Haycock is on hand to give Brian and Margie a brief history of time. Can we disturb you, Neil? Sure. <laughs> Very nice to be here with my friend Brian. Hi, Neil. Hi, yeah. Ryan. How are you doing, mate? Neil, how far back does clock making go? Well, clocks go back to sort of the ancient Greeks and Egyptians trying to measure time. Yeah. But in Europe, medieval times, about 1245, 1250. Right. But without mechanics, obviously. So how was it with the sun? No, this is mechanical timekeeping, and it was the invention of the verge escapement. The verge or folio escapement was the first time teeth on a wheel had been used to create regular ticks by using springs or weights. It was the birth of mechanical clocks and an end to less accurate methods like sand timers. Large clocks using a verge escapement began to appear in churches across Europe, but these tower clocks had no dials, just a mechanism to strike a bell on the hour. Neil's got a more recent version that works on the same principle. I love this. This was made by my great-great-grandfather's older brother, who had a business just down the road. It has two components. One side is the timekeeping side, and the other side is the side that strikes on the hour. And this thing on the front here, this is the count wheel, and this dictates what it strikes. This clock uses a later deadbeat escapement and pendulum. The deadbeat created less recoil in the wheel's movement and therefore greater accuracy. This escapement is very clever in that it provides just enough impetus one way and the other to keep the pendulum running. So perfect accuracy, basically. Very, very good accuracy for its day. Absolutely amazing. Maybe a second over a week. Clockmakers realised longer pendulums meant less recoil and greater accuracy, hence the rise of the long case or grandfather clock, as it became known. But these new clocks needed craftsmen to make the mechanical pieces, and Ashbourne, with its tradition of iron and brass smiths, became a world centre for clockmaking. Look at that snap. So you've got this talented group of craftsmen in this area. Do they just stick to clocks or were they moving on to do other things? No, clock makers were used in an array of different things, uh, especially the early Industrial Revolution. So it's no surprise when you look at early cotton spinning machinery that the machinery bears a very close relationship to clock They're makers. Clocks. In nearby Cromford, the industrial pioneer Richard Arkwright cleverly realised that the Ashbourne clockmaker's skills in making cogs that moved at different speeds could revolutionise his cotton spinning factories. I can't tell the difference. Is this a clock or is this something that makes cotton? I'm not surprised you can't really <laughs> tell the difference. It's a drafting head. It's what Arkwright used to take the place of a person sitting at home spinning cotton. Factory system, mass wow. production of cotton. But basically, the That's clock amazing. is the birth of the Industrial Revolution. Yeah, it it really is, isn't it? The clock it and along. clockmakers. Yeah. It moved it along. But in helping Arkwright develop mass production techniques, the clockmakers inadvertently helped seal their own demise. By the late 19th century, the Germans and Americans were efficiently mass producing clocks while English clockmakers were still working by hand with time-consuming machinery like this. Time was called on the Derbyshire clockmakers and now Haycox are the only firm left in the town. We've had to adapt over the years. In two world wars, we were munitions, making ignition tubes for big guns and stuff. There's still parts lying around the factory now. I love tradition. Right. <laughs> how about me attempting to put a clock together? Let's see how dexterous you are. I've got about five minutes. <laughs> as long oh, as I get to keep it. terribly dexterous. If Margie's going to make a clock, 
and she needs an apprentice to make some cogwheels first. Like, you can just see it. You can just see it exactly perfect. Perfect little teeth. It's like just absolutely perfect. The clever clockmakers of Ashbourne truly helped create the modern world. That's the components ready. Now let's see what Margie can create. Stand by. Right. This right. Looks, now this looks easy peasy. <laughs> yeah. Right. So you've got to put it together. Yeah. Just let her do it by herself and see what uh, happens. <laughs> this is the centre pinion. Mm. This is the one that carries the hands. Yeah. The hour hand and the mm. minute hand. Right. Your only clue is that one goes in the middle. Yeah. So it does. How small is it? Should have worn your glasses, Margie. Does that go in there? Yeah. This is the easy bit. They don't wind in? No. Nope. So how do they all stay, then? I hear she's winding me up. Awful, Brian. Right, dear. Now comes the difficult bit. You've got to put that on top of that. <sighs> so you've got to squeeze it with your hands gently, squeeze it together. Yeah. And hold and turn it sideways. What, try and get that to go in the hole? I'm trying to get those to go in the hole. This is just like the 19th century Krypton factor. Yeah, I'm helping. It's just shaking. Are you? Is that it? No. Nope. You've then got to turn it sideways. Oh. And you've got to get those... And get that in there. That one's in. Yeah. Do you know what? What? I think you've done it. Oh, hey! <laughs> Great. Look at you. <laughs> well done. I enjoyed that. Just need some hands and a face to look like this, and you've helped keep British clockmaking alive, Margie and Brian. Well done. Now it's time to find out what Team Dusteroo are up to. I've got a present for you. Oh, I'm very excited. I love presents. Donuts! No way! Yes! And what flavours? I've got glazed raspberries, salted caramel and apple pie. Oh, my God. Well, listen, I am a gentleman, so I will allow you to choose Ooh. what one you want first, and then I'll have the other two. Oh. <laughs> what a gent, eh? Well, look, there's three, so you can have one now, and when we pull over for a cup of tea later, we'll share one. OK, one bite. Oh my <laughs> no crumbs on the seats, please. As they munch, they're making their way to Cromford, where, as we heard earlier, Richard Arkwright revolutionised industrial production by building the world's first water-powered cotton mill. And that's exactly where our next shop can be found. Isn't that lovely? Yes! Here we are. Right, we're nearly at the end of the day, young man. <laughs> young man, I like the sound of that. Young man! The Arkwright Society purchased the mills in 1979 when they were due to be demolished. And in the 1990s, Cromford Antiques moved into one of the mill buildings. There's over 50 cabinets in here, so what can our duo get their hands on that might spin a profit? Silver Exeter, that spoon is 1783. Which one? The spoon right here. The big one? Mm-hmm. So you're looking at the Georgian era there. This gorgeous Georgian silver fruit spoon has a ticket price of £65. I want to ask you a question. What's to stop any antique collector or, you know, dealer saying that this is actually 1783? But how can I be sure that this actually is? Silver will have these hallmarks on it. She'll have a date letter, you'll have a town letter, and you'll have a maker's mark. Yeah, well. it's mad to be holding something 1783 that's 230 years old. But doesn't that spark your imagination? Mm, man. That's a good contender. Yes, absolutely. It's something completely different than yep. what we've already got. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, one to file under maybe. Now, anything else that might delight? This instantly caught my eye because I love bells. It was the first thing I ever started collecting. But it says here, early 20th century bell. Whoever touches me will hear my voice. Well, it's getting late, and I think that bell might be tolling for these two. They don't make a purchase soon. Okie dokie, I've made an executive decision. Oh, okay. I know you don't like that. We work together, and we do work together. We do. But it's the first thing that I've seen today that's over 240 years old. Yeah. And for me, like that's the real, the first antique we've really found. Mm -hmm. You know, in my in my ignorant ways. Yeah. Let's see what kind of a deal you can do with David, then. <laughs> David. I like this. I'd like, like to it. purchase this from you, sir. You would. And I'd like to know what the best price is that you could possibly do on it. 65. It would have to be 55, Keith. That would have to be the best. 
that's a significant drop. Can we not say 57 and a half? What? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> no, 55. I'm not even going to mess here. Oh. The final deal of the day is done. The fruit spoon for £55 pounds leaves them with £237 to spend. We are that done. Was a good day. Off we go. Off we go. Time for some rest, I think. So the Dusteroos are calling it a day, and Brian and Margie look like they're heading home too. What's next? Have you been to Matlock? Matlock. Matlock. Yeah, in Derbyshire. I thought that was a TV show about a detective. <laughs> no, Matlock. No, Matlock. What do they sell? Well, that's where we're going. They sell all sorts. Well, what is Matlock? Is that like it's a, a lovely town in Derbyshire? Oh, it's a place. It's a place. I thought it was a shop. I think that's. Matalan, Brian. <laughs> Tomorrow might be a long day for Margie. Nighty night. Morning. It's another beautiful day on the road trip. How are you finding the Buick on uh, day two? Yeah, what? It's the sheer width of it. Yeah. And you being in the most awful place. Because <laughs> I'm happily smiling along here and I'm halfway over the, the oncoming. I know. <laughs> if any side is going to get hit first, <laughs> it's mine. But I haven't had to shout Lane once You yet. haven't? No. Lane! No, I'm <laughs> and the boys are also back on the road. How'd you go on yesterday? Well, you know what? I actually really enjoyed it. I'm telling you now, you were going to win this. I hadn't a clue. I went into the place, I'm walking around for an hour, couldn't find none. Eventually, I found this lovely hat, and I said, Deadly, that'll definitely fetch it. I walked up to a woman, she goes, sorry, that's actually my hat. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a quick meet and greet, a quick look in each other's boots, and get going again. Hello, Hello, ladies. How are you doing? How are you? you all right? Good morning. You brought oh. the sunshine with Hi, you. Hi, girls. Hello. The shoppers. How the shoppers. Mwah. Aren't you a ray of sunshine Why, today? Thank you. How are you doing, partner? How are you, darling? Do you know, know what Keith and I did last night? What? We stayed up all night last night Googling antiques just to, <laughs> oh, just to brush well, up on our skills yeah. today. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Speaking of antiques, we bought something really old, didn't we, Keith? We certainly did. Really old. Right, go on, well, give us a look. Let's see it. Give us a look. Pop the boots. Can't wait. A spoon. A spoon. <laughs> no, in the old spoon. Have a look spoon. at that little baby. So we spent. Lovely berry spoon. Don't we tell them what we spent. How much was it? I'm not telling them. Don't tell them anything. No. Don't well, tell we them might anything. buy it off you. It's a competition. <laughs> <laughs> look, I'll tell you what. We, we spent the fortune on it, but if you give us 100 quid for it, you can have it. No, you're all right. <laughs> Keith and Rue also bought the sign, the planter, and the ewer, leaving them with £237 to spend on the day ahead. So what have you two bought then? Oh, oh. what have we bought? Big talkers. Drum roll, please. <laughs> yes, drum roll, please. Right. Stand that up and roll down the hill. Actually, it's matching you quite well. Good, isn't it? Yeah, look, he wore his shirt to match his bought items. It's the world's feathers. But look, it's belonged to some cadets, hasn't it? In the 1950s, 68 quid. 60. Well, okay, not bad, not bad. What was it though? Did you bargain them down? Yeah. What 99. That was a great bit of bargaining going on yeah, there. It was good, wasn't it? Well, now, I never asked this and I haven't looked at our contract. Can we actually purchase our own items if they don't sell at auction? <laughs> Can no. we bid? How? No. Well, that's How one way of winning. Right? <laughs> or cheating. <laughs> the drum was Brian and Margie's sole purchase, leaving them with £332 to spend today. Right, good luck. Have a good day, folks. Let's get out of here. We might stay here, have a nice uh, picnic Margie, by the go. lake. Let's, let's go, go, let's go. We've got a lot of shopping to do. Bye. With the pleasantries exchanged, it's time to put the pedal to the metal. Day two is go, go, go. Whoa, wait, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Today it would be nice <laughs> if I could find something that actually is worth something. Well, I'm sure we will. I'm, I'm sure you will, but I would love that I pick one thing and I actually get it right. You, and you still go, can't guarantee. I want to impress you. Oh, bless you. Oh, I think Brian might have a bit of a crush on our Margie. Now, what are they after today? I could do with a bit of Irish stuff in this next shop. Maybe I should ring my mum and ask her if she had any old carriage clocks at home and send it over. What are you going <laughs> And we buy it off her. Wait, hang on. Is this, is that, are we allowed to do that? Can I buy a clock off my mum? <laughs> something off your mum. Why? Because it's not fair on your friend Keith, then. You've got an advantage. Sounds like a Keith problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder if Margie's going to have any Brian problems at their next stop in the Victorian spa resort of Matlock. 
home to Matlock Antiques and Collectibles. Look out! See if it works. Sounds a very good sound. It's all very entertaining, but you've only bought one item. Do you like this kind of furniture? Is that a poker table? Well, it's a Georgian, like a little pedestal table look. Lovely splayed pedestal you know feet. It, do you know what it'd be great for? You could play great drinking games on it. It's, it's lovely. You it's have a, a different shot. Right, like, and then we spin it. Like for taking and wherever it lands, you have to take that shot. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good, wouldn't it? This Georgian mahogany supper table was actually designed for eating and drinking. You'd have your high tea on this and rotate the dishes of sandwiches, cakes, savouries and roasts. Ah, delightful. Ticket price, a tasty £195. Do you like a Jaffa cake, ma'am? Yeah, quite. There you go. Custard you. creams are coming. Don't take them, don't take them all. <laughs> the custard creams are on the way. <laughs> Get back here, you. Only two left. No. Oh, no. You could probably even play cards, couldn't you? You could play spin the bottle. Spin the bottle, you'd all sit around. <laughs> you sit around and this, you spin it, and then, oh, hey. Oh, God. oh get in there, Margie. <laughs> <laughs> See, he's keen on her. Calm down, Brian. You're making her all of a fluster. But that's one potential buy. Anything else catching the eye? What's this? Is this like matches or something? No. <laughs> Let's have a look. It's a nice old box. What's that? It's something to do with maps and it, measuring maps. It's French. This is an early 20th century map measurer. You'd run its little wheel over a map and the various gauges on it would work out by scale how far a distance was. It's priced at £15. Is this a movie film behind? Yeah. Ah, oh, right, OK. Yeah, but it's a collector's item, isn't it? Like us. <laughs> yeah, and it's French, which makes it quite nice. Look, all the, it's all written in French. Le mesurer instant les distances. No, that's not what that says. <laughs> it says le mesurer instant oh. <laughs> des distances. C'est terrible, Brian. That's right, well it's done. Straight. I think we should get that. 15 quid, it's yeah. a bargain. Yep, OK, that's a definite. There's a few things in here, but is anything going to catch the eye like that supper table? You obviously think there's something special here. You yeah, just don't like the price, do you? It's not dear, that's the thing. Yeah, but if we want to make a profit, we yeah, have to right. get it down. So shall we? I think we should go on. OK, let's go. On. Go on, then. Come on, let's do it. Fortune favours the brave. But fools rush in, Margie. Let's see how Brian fares with Judy. I've got a dog called Judy. Judy? Hello, ma'am. Hello there. Doing? First of all, I'd like you? to buy this. And I would also like to buy the table inside that has the scallops, is that right? The scallop table? Yeah. And I would like to offer you £140. That's a beautiful table. We'll need to have a look how much it is. The table inside was 195, but it's a bit wonky. A bit wonky? It's a little bit wobbly. Right. Now, I'd be willing to pay full price if it wasn't wobbly, but we had to get an old beer mat and stick it under to stop it wobbling. Nice try, Brian. We'll go and look at the table, right. I think. Well, let's have a look. Shall we leave the money there? <laughs> You're mad, I'm Irish, give me that money. <laughs> the table belongs to another dealer, but Judy's been permitted to haggle on their behalf. This little baby here, look. See, it's a bit wobbly, though, look. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, if I put me pint of Guinness on that... <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. It's gone everywhere. Look, that's the price. Absolute death would be, say, 170. Mm. Oh. Mm. That might be staying here a lot longer this time. Yeah. What about yeah. the table... Plus, yeah, the other for yeah. 170. What about 160? Just because we're so nice, 165 because I'm so nice. Do you want to go for that? Oh, come on, you have a deal. <laughs> 165, welcome. you're welcome. Nice working with you. Well, well done, Bran. The map measure for 15 pounds and 45 knocked off the table to bring it down to 150 isn't too bad at all. That leaves them with 167 pounds. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. That was a good result. Rue and Keith, meanwhile, are on their way to the Black Rocks Country Park, just on the edge of the beautiful Peak District. They've come to find out the history behind an organisation that helped thousands of people who've got into trouble on the hills. And it couldn't operate without volunteers, like IT consultant David O'Sullivan. You must be David. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Keith. Hi, Hi I'm you? Lovely to meet you. Hi. 
David is with Derby Mountain Rescue, one of the seven teams who operate in the Peak District, out of a total of 74 teams across the UK, staffed entirely by outdoor enthusiasts who can be called upon at any time to hit the hills. I can imagine, you know, you don't want anybody to get injured, but when you get a call out, it must be exciting. Yeah, there's that split second where you go from just being at work doing something quite mundane to the adrenaline kicks in and suddenly you're off to help someone. It might just be someone at the bottom who's hurt an ankle, but it could have been a climber that's fallen from the top and is, you know, it's got serious injuries. But you could end up kind of abseiling down rocks like that. You could end up in rushing waters. You could end up anywhere trying to help someone. Yeah. Um... And you volunteer to do that. You go from your day job to saving lives. That's impressive. Uh, well, I think everyone in Mountain Rescue does it for, you know, you never know when it's going to be you that falls over, so it's always good to be able to help other people. Hill walking as a leisure pursuit began in the 19th century, but back then, if you got in trouble, you had to just hope a friendly farmer might pass to help you out. Basic first aid and rescue equipment began to appear in the early 20th century, and a loose jigsaw of mountain rescue services existed after World War II. But it was an incident in 1964 that prompted the formation of the Peak District Mountain Rescue Team when three scouts went missing in heavy snow. Hundreds of people went out looking. They found all of them, unfortunately, they all died. That obviously kick-started the clear need for some kind of organised mountain rescue. And now from that, today, we do water rescue, we do advanced first aid, search and rescue for missing persons for the police. Uh, yeah, we've pretty much got a, a broad stroke of everything. And all we're doing. that was kind of brought on in 1964 by the unfortunate loss of three lives. Yeah. The volunteers today undergo a year and a half of training and are regularly retested on their skills. And today they're going to practice finding someone. They just need a lost hiker. Did you ever play hide and go seek as a kid? Oh yes, I was very good at right, it. I'll count to ten, you'll get lost. And close your eyes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I'll eight, beat nine, you. Pub? Yeah. <laughs> There'll be none of that today, thank you. While Rue goes off and hides in her day glow, the mountain rescue team are organising to carry out a search for her. So what we're going to be doing, guys, is we've got a missing person today for an exercise. It's the lovely Rue. She's hiding up in the woods there. We're going to see if we can find her. We're going to have a team line search out to one side and the mountain rescue search dog England, Flo, it's going to search the other side and we're going to see who finds her first. The line search team will stay a few metres apart as they head into the woodland to sweep the area. Meanwhile, Keith and David are off with Flo to see if they can pick up Rue's scent. Chanel number five, possibly. Well, how long does it actually take to train a mountain rescue dog to do his job? So it can be up to two years, obviously it depends on the dog. All of the mountain rescue search dog England dogs go through the same training. They work on air scenting, so what she'll be doing is looking for a human scent out in the woods here. It's a big game for her. She's looking for that person. When she finds it, she gets her favorite toy. And that's why Bart here has to see what she's doing, make sure she's working properly, make sure she's looking, finding, finding that person. Mountain rescue dogs were first used in continental Europe some 400 years ago. Here in the UK, their ability for use in search and rescue wasn't fully exploited until the 1960s. Our flow was trained by one of nine affiliated search dog associations that now exist in the British Isles. The dogs are a vital resource as they can cover an area that would take 10 humans to cover. So how will we know if or when a flow finds somebody? So she'll come back having found something and she'll indicate to Bart. She okay. should do a bark, either a little one or a loud one, just to let him know that she's found something. Aww. Good girl, what have you got? So that means she's found something, she's come back to ah! Good girl! Could it be a lost antiques expert, Good perchance? Girl. Thank you. Ah! How she's is this for a rescue team? Ah! Still oh, found you. what a good, good girl. Hello. What a good girl. And the end reward for Flo is she gets to play with her favourite toy. Good girl. Yeah. Now they've found Rue, you know, they need to get her oh. off the hill. She's still got antiques to buy. Basically, I was walking, I, I tripped over, I twisted my ankle, it's really sore. <laughs> yeah. Ah! Oh! Oh, you're going full yeah. effect, are you? Rue, you, you do remember that this is just an exercise that we're doing, that you're not actually injured. You do, you do know that, don't you, right? Keith, are you going to help me well, and the guys you? carry the stretch down? No, I think I'll leave that to the professionals. Don't want to break a sweat, man. You know what I mean? My makeup, for God's sake. 
Ah, oh, Keith. The art of chivalry is alive and well. Jesus, real. what did you have for dinner last night? <laughs> <laughs> the way of you. A lady never tells. So, with Rue safely rescued, how are Brian and Margie getting on? I'm nervous now, you know, because we've, we know, we've put our money where our mouth is, yeah. we've taken a gamble, we've taken a risk, so I'm a little nervous now. Well, wait till you're sitting at the auction, you'll be even more nervous. Oh, don't. I'm not going. Oh, you can sit in the car in the car. Yeah. <laughs> you can just wave out the window with the hand signals. Thumbs up, <laughs> thumbs down. <laughs> like the execution, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Look, you've got to have a oh, sense yeah. of humour. <laughs> Brian and Margie are now en route to Hartington. The town was once a big cheese in the world of cheese. <laughs> At one time, producing 25% of the world's output of Stilton, Team M Coop have come to Dauphin Antiques with £167 left to spend. Here we are. Lovely. Looks very smart. Looks... Wow. Right, in we come. Let's go. <laughs> What can they see in here that might be worth a punt? That's Irish for pound. Marty. I'm oh, sorry. Did you find anything? You're so far away, Marty. Hey, didn't we do the same gag yesterday? <laughs> what have you got there? Opera glasses. Oh, those are all right. Are they good? Yeah, 15 quid. That's Mother of Pearl. Oh, I didn't know that. Did I find something good? Well done. The theatres, yeah. back in the day, were very small. Yeah. And then they started to get large. In the Victorian time, they got bigger yeah, and yeah. bigger. So people needed to be able to just have a little close-up. Yep. And then they'd go like that. Hey, <laughs> she shouldn't be with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could they be worth something? Oh, they're worth more than 15 quid. Really? Yeah. Look at me, find out something I'm a joke. <laughs> well done. We'll keep those to hand. Oh, here, hold on to them. You hold no, on to them. Don't drop them. When we separate, we seem to come back with magic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going this way. <laughs> I know that laugh. Well, that's a quick start. Now, what are the antiques detectives up to? They've travelled to Bakewell, yes, home of the famous Tart, and also to Rutland Arms Antique Centre. Now, Keith, this is our last chance saloon. Why are you saying that like we're in trouble? <laughs> Four <laughs> items bought already, we're laughing. We're nearly there. Sounding confident there, Keith. This pair have £237 left in their budget. Early 19th century Offerman brass brazier with magnificent axe head handles. But what's a brazier? Hey, it's a brazier, Keith, for burning coal in. Well, the only brazier I know, you'd need a couple of them. And if I don't know what it's for, we're not buying it. <laughs> Probably wise. The clock is starting to tick for this pair, and time to get a wriggle on. Keith, what are you doing? I'm running around like a headless chicken trying to find us something, and you're just chilling, stroking your beard, contemplating poetry. Chill. I have found the perfect thing. Really? Yes. I'm sitting on it. <laughs> this chair. Really? Ah, oh, yeah. Now that That's, is that is beautiful. Cool. Sit down there. That Sit is down there. gorgeous. Now, do you know Sit how? Sit down there. Cross your legs. Oh my goodness. Now, I mean, come on. Do you know what's the equivalent of sitting in butter? Oh well, I've never it. tried that. I tried it once. The stains were murder to get out of my trousers. This leather and oak armchair is Georgian and is priced at one hundred and sixty-five pounds. Look at the corrosion on those rivets. They would have been brass rivets. That is where that you cannot fake. You'll get a lot of reproductions, but you know what? Some of them are missing. Some of them are just corroded. You've got I dents love, here and there. I love that my hands are filthy after picking it up too. It's ancient. It's an antique. It's what I'm here for. It is. It's to buy an antique and sell an antique. I love this. I think it's cool. Let's see what we can do in the price. That's going to come down a bit. Call in the boss there and we negotiate. All right. The boss is Nathan. Keith has fallen in love with uh, this beautiful chair. OK, mm -hmm. yeah. But you've got it priced up at 165. Right. We've yeah. only got 60 quid. Uh, we've had a lot of interest in that chair, um, and so we know that the very best price will be 140. Is there any room for moving on that? Unfortunately, even? no. I say we've, we've been asked several times already, and that's the lowest that we can go on it, yeah. Well, I think we are going to stretch to 140, Nathan. Really? 
The man has spoken. <laughs> so, £25 knocked off the armchair to bring it in at 140. That's the Dusteroos done for the day. Back in Hartington, have Margie and Brian spotted anything else interesting yet? Margie, you found something amazing. It's medieval Tinder. Left now, left. She's all right. <laughs> yeah, she's all right. Left, left. We'll wait and see what happens. Might take 5,000 years, but you never know. In my day, Tinder was what you used to get the fire going. I suppose it sort of still is. Anyway, back to the antiques. Do you like that? What is it? It's a little pin cushion, a little silver. It's an Edwardian one. Well, like you stick pins in ten. it. Yeah, that's why it's called a pin cushion, Brian. <laughs> These animal pin cushions are highly collectible, though piggies do tend to be fairly common. There's no ticket price, so it must be free. How much did you sell that for? <sighs> no way. <laughs> that much? <laughs> that yeah, much? It'd probably go for 60, 70 pounds. OK. Probably. You don't think we would lose on that? It's very hard to be precise in this business. Mm. We don't know who's going to be there tomorrow, do we? We better see how much we can get it for first. Time to speak to the lovely Jan. So how much is it, Jan? 80. Right. Mm. Oh, easy, 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 yeah. easy. Because, excited. you know, it's a lovely little thing, but you know the silver market is all over, mm. and the piggies are the most common of the pink cushions. Mm. Would you do it for 50? Go on. Are you forgetting something? And we're also going to take. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to take them as well, okay, please. That is nice. So that was the pin cushion for fifty pounds and the opera glasses for fifteen, making a grand total of sixty-five pounds. Sixty-five. And that also means all the shopping for this road trip is over. Time for a bit of reflection. So we are officially done. I know, what a roller coaster couple of days we've had, eh? I know. It's Have like you... I know you all my life. I know it is. You know, it's like, like I've known you hundreds of years. But there you go. I've enjoyed myself. You have educated me. You're a very wise woman in your trade. Thank you, young man. Um, but the part of this trip which I will enjoy the most will be when we make that profit much more than Marge and Brian. Oh. And I have the bragging rights for the next six months. Oh, I'd say six years at least. Let's call it 66, shall we? Nighty night. It's a rather soggy auction day, but spirits are high. What have Brian and Keith learned over the last few days? Do well, you think you know anything more about antiques than you did before you started? Uh, well, I know they have to be 100 years old before they can call them an antique. Did they? Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dear. Where did I go wrong? <laughs> but the reality is we haven't got a clue. No. We really don't have any clue until we're sitting in that auction. Have we any bids? None. <laughs> <laughs> well, may the best man win. Good luck, buddy. God bless you. Well, today's auction is in God's own county. Sheffield, South Yorkshire, to be precise. And our auctioneers are the Sheffield Auction Gallery, who've been in the business since 1840. Nice. I recognise the rumble of the engine. You're looking very excited, actually. Hello. Hello, Jan. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. Ladies. Hey. Hey, ladies. How are you doing? Hi. How are you, partner? Long time, long time. Yes, yes. Kisses, pats, presses, touches. OK. Off you go. No, after you. No, after you. Let's get inside, shall we, and get on with it. Just already. My lovely horse was <laughs> running through the field. <laughs> Enough of this horsing around. Brian and Margie spent £298 on five items, including the opera glasses. I'm jealous of this. These are the opera glasses he bought for £15. Wow. Mother of pearl. Now, I don't know anything about antiques, but that looks like a bargain of 15 quid. Beautiful. I think. 45 to 60. Easy profit. For 15 quid. I know. Come on. <laughs> Keith and Rue spent exactly a five or more. £303 also on five lots. What will Brian and Margie make of their purchases? Oh, oh, oh that's nice. That yeah. is nice. Lovely old oak chair. Can I sit in? 
Yeah, I quite like it. It's studded. It is, I do like the studs in it. The studs are cool. Yeah. It's a bit bad well, condition, though. Sorry, Ryan, what did you say? You like the studs in it? <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, it's missing a few studs, yeah, though, look. So that's got to yeah. devalue it a little bit, hasn't it? Quite a bit of age to it. It is nice. Yeah. We'll give them a bit of credit for that one. Yeah, we'll definitely Good eye on that one. Good yeah, eye on that one, Duffy. Credit for that. Last one. Today's auctioneer is John Morgan. What does he think will sing today and what might hit a bum note? <laughs> Sweet little item, that silver pig. Highly collectible, solid silver, a pin cushion. Fills lots of boxes for lots of collectors. I expect that small item to bring one of the biggest prices today. The wooden arrow. It's wooden. It's 120 centimetres long. It's painted. There's not much more I think I can say about it. I think we're going to have to find a way to help that one on its way. With everyone primed in the room, on the phones and online, let's get this auction started. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> auction deal. So how are you boys feeling? This is it. You've done your shopping now. Very <laughs> confident. First off the blocks is Keith and Rue's fruit spoon, and it makes some jam for them. And I will start. Where do you think? Fiver. Fifteen. Fifteen pounds. Two right. Eighteen elsewhere. Fifteen pounds on commission. I went eighteen and twenty and twenty-two, sir. Thank you. I have twenty-two pounds in the room now. Right. 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 Elsewhere. Right. It's at twenty-two pounds on my left. Are we all Come done? Come on, it's got to go for uh, more. Twenty-two, than that. twenty-five, twenty-eight, sir. No, uh, twenty-five pounds on the internet. Are we there? <laughs> we love Be sure. Amazing, twenty-five pounds on itself. Stop it. Oh. That's not. <laughs> That's a tough start for the Dusteroos. Don't look at me like that. Someone got a bike. Roll up, roll up. It's Brian's drum. Anybody want to have a go at 20? <laughs> 20 anywhere. <laughs> 10. Anybody want to have a go at 20 pounds? 10. Take a tenner. 10 at the back. 12, sir. 15. 18. Ooh. 20. No, 18. 20, sir. Go on, thank you. 22, no. At 20 pounds for the front oh, row, any more no. for any more. Oh, at 22, right. someone else, 25, no. At 22 pounds for the man in the cap, are we oh, all done? Sure. 81 now. You and your drum. <laughs> ba boom. That's not a great start either. Well, that's a disappointment. That is, that is a shame. Next, for Keith and Rue, it's the Copper Ewer. Five pounds started, <laughs> eight anywhere else. Oh. Eight over here, ten anywhere else. <laughs> 10, thank you. 12, 15, 18, 20, no. 20 on the internet, thank you. 22, thank you. I have 22 ooh, pounds in the room ooh, now. Ooh. Looking on 25 elsewhere. 25 and 28, ooh. sir. No, 25 on the internet, are we all done? It's sold. Oh. I mean, oh. We lost a lot of 15 quid. <laughs> Never mind, Keith. There's a way to go yet. Well, we played the game, we spent our money. Now, can Brian and Margie's French map measurer do any better? Five pound bid. I've got five pound bid already. Looking for eight <laughs> elsewhere. And eight. Thank you. Ten. Thank you, sir. Twelve. Thank you. Twelve and fifteen. No. There you go. Twelve pounds to the lady. Fifteen anywhere else. I have twelve pounds to the lady. Are we all done? But twelve pounds to the lady. Be sure. It's sold. Twelve pounds. Well, that's a bad loss. So ne pas un profit. Yeah, but it's an interesting item. It's an 18 Clearly not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Time for Keith and Rue's planter. Can it grow a profit? 12, I've 12 pounds, 15, thank you, 18, and 20, and 22. 22 and 25, yeah. and 28, no, yeah. Yeah. At 25 pounds in the middle Go of the room, are we all more. done? So I will be selling, and I do it. Oh. <laughs> Another loss for Keith and Rue, I'm afraid. 25 quid for a bin. <laughs> <laughs> Can Margie and Brian's table do any better? I start at 55, 60, That's looking good. at 65 elsewhere. At £60 on commission. Does anybody else want to take these commissions on? Come on? 65, thank you. And 70 with me and 75. No, are you sure? Don't lose it for a bid. Are you definitely no? sure? As, is everyone else sure? I sell at £70. Pounds. Such a shame. It's a wonder, but there it is. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's another loss. This is not going too well. Oh, that's disappointing, but... It's a shame, isn't it? Never mind. OK, the chair. Maybe this is going to be the one to buck the trend. Oh, look oh. at that. Love. <laughs> <laughs> 25, 28, 30. Looking at 35 elsewhere. Worth a uh, lot. 30 pounds on commission. Are we all done? Uh, 30 pounds on commission. Uh, 30 pounds. 35. Thank you, sir. I'm out. 40 nice elsewhere. Chair, uh, 35 that's pounds ridiculous. in the back of the room. Are we all done? At 35, 40, thank you, and five, sir. No, at 40 pounds in the room. Keep any more for any more? I will sell at 40. Be sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think <laughs> I think I need a seat after that. 
That's a disaster. Now. That's painful. We've lost 100 quid on one item. Next, it's Brian's find, the opera glasses. Can they get their first profit? We have a commission, here we go. I go 15, 18, 20, looking on 22 elsewhere. 20 pounds on a maiden commission, are we all done? Uh, 20 pounds on a maiden commission, anybody else want to have a go? 22, <laughs> I'm out. The internet says 22, now look on 25 elsewhere. At 22 pounds on the internet, make no mistake, I sell at 22, be sure. You are there, soul. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> seven quid. It might only be seven quid, but it's your first profit of the day. A profit's a profit. in the back of the room, though. It's Keith and Rue's final item. Can it make them a profit? Thirty pounds. Look, it's on there now. Look. One of the highlights. Nice. Of <laughs> <laughs> two pounds. Yo. Two pounds. Oh, some. No. Two pounds. Five. Eight. Ten. Twelve. 15, 18, 20, 22, 25, 28, yes. 30, yes. 5, Keep 40. Going. There you go. Five. No, 50. 40 pounds to my on, wife. 45. Can you believe it? 45, thank yes. you. 50, no, yeah. 45, this 45 pounds to the gentleman. <laughs> what a miracle. It's hey. sold. Well done. There you go. Yeah, let's all <laughs> you... At last, a profit for the Dusteroos. Well done. And finally, Brian and Margie's pin cushion. There it is. I'll see that yeah, every day. Of interest in this one. <laughs> 40, 45, 50, looking at 55 elsewhere. 55 and 60 and when 5 and 70 and, and 5 and 80 and 5. <laughs> uh, I'm out. It's 85 pounds in the back of the room. Are we all done? At 85 pounds, any more for any more? Be sure. Be very sure. You are. Get in there, you little beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! The pig has brought home the bacon. Another profit for Brian and Margie. Come on, let's go and have a chat. Go find out. Yes, let's crunch the numbers and see who has triumphed today. Keith and Rue started out with £400 and after auction costs and fees made a loss of £171.80, leaving them with £228.20p. Brian and Margie also made a loss after fees of £124.98p, leaving them with a total of £275.02 in their piggy. There was less than 50 quid in it, but they are the battle of the boy band winners. Well, guys, we won, but... Technically, we lost the lease. Yeah. Well, well done, yeah. everybody. Smallest loser. Well done. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Well done, brother. Oh. That? Oh, <laughs> Look, Happy yeah. Right, girls, look, it's been a great Happy couple of days. Thank but you, guys. We've got to go back to our real jobs back now. Job. <laughs> <laughs> bye Thank bye. you for everything. Bye. If you ever need any backing singers, me and Margie are available. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we could, aren't we? <sighs> oh, this is marvellous. <laughs> they very sweet. They're very well-mannered, I thought. They are, actually. They're quite they gentlemanly. They're very charming. See ya, I wouldn't want to be ya. Ah, oh. <laughs> The heat of the auction's over. What did the boys think? Well, Brian, I have to say, congratulations. Brian. Thank you very much. I thought we were going to do better than that. It's, it was a lot harder than I thought. It was a tough one. At the end of the day, you're the winner. The history books will only remember you, they won't remember me. Well, we've had a couple of great days. Yeah. I'll tell you what, after that experience, I reckon we should go to an antique shop. <laughs> You're having a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going straight to the pub for a pint. I'm with you, brother. I'm with you. Yeah. Cheers and bye-bye.